Alright, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, in this video we're going to get back into Webflow and I'm going to show you how to do um, a pretty basic animation but just to sort of let you know how to do a fade in and a move up type of animation. This is something that you see uh, quite a bit so when you're scrolling maybe the element that hits the bottom it fades in and moves up on the page just a little bit. Um, you don't want to go overboard with animation but a little bit of animation can help the user experience in terms of knowing something that's coming next. It adds a little bit of delight. Uh, in our case there's there is some space here but there's no like clear button marker that separates this from this and these are two different blog posts but the marker is actually the image um, so as we're scrolling down it might be helpful as I'm reading this part to see that there's another section coming up and then once I see that a couple of times I see this image move up and in and then I know that that's the image that's similar to this one then the next time I'm going to be expecting that when I see an image move up and in this is another article and then you would go all the way down the page with each uh, each top image top of the image uh, once it gets to the bottom of the viewport screen it fades up and in and then you get to the end and no more fading up and in helps you to know it's not an error it's just the end of the page okay so let's get in this is a, a sort of a simple blog layout that I created the other day and uh, what we want to do is we want to animate this image now because we're using our collection image um, each of these image elements is going to take on the same animation. So we go up here on the right hand side and then we choose the lightning bolt. That's our interactions tab. And we don't want a page trigger. Uh, this happens whenever the pages, the entire page's state changes. So like a page load or you can see them here. Uh, so when the mouse comes in the viewport or the page is scrolled or the page is loaded that's not what we want. What we want is when this element hits the bottom of the viewport and it's being scrolled up then we want that element to do something. So that's the scroll into view so animate, you can see down here, animate when the element scrolls into view that's exactly what we want to do. So let's click on that and then we have some options here. We can choose to use the trigger only on desktop or on any of these different um, devices so you can do your animations uh, only for desktop if you want to. So if you don't want a lot of bandwidth or to have to uh, slow down your load times with a lot of um, extras, I guess some people might see them as extras, the animations, then you can sort of turn those off. Maybe they're not appropriate for one of these. Uh, we want to focus here where it says when scrolled into view, then we want to take some action. So what we want to do is start an animation. You could choose any of these um, sort of preset animations, I guess. So we're going to start an animation. We don't need to talk about offset right now, but what we want to do is add some actual animations. We want this image to actually do something. So I can just do this and we don't have to worry about those. But we want to focus here. So to add an animation, we just click on the plus sign, and then this brings us into a new uh, animation. And this is sort of like a, an animation timeline if you've used uh, any sort of uh, animation software before. Uh, I'm just going to call this fade in up. So the animation is going to fade in and up at the same time. So to do that, we need to do two different things. We need to um, look at what we can actually animate. These are the properties that we can actually animate in the CSS. So we want to move it and we also want to deal with the opacity so that's the fade in part. Let's work on the move first. So we click on move and uh, as soon as the page loads this is the first thing that's going to happen. Right now our animation takes 0.5 seconds so half, half of a second. And we can change that in a minute. Uh, as we move down the page, this allows you to see your animation. Nothing is happening because we have nowhere for this initial place to go. Okay, it's even given us 
a little uh, caution here. It says it doesn't have a value applied, so it's not moving from one position to another position. So that's part of what we have to do. So when we come in here, it's really important to choose the selected element. Uh, so this is the element on the page, which is going to choose these images. Uh, it's going to be our collection item image, and that's actually going to allow it to affect all of the images. Um, you can put a class on things and you can uh, everything that has a particular class will take the animation or I believe it um, it affects the element that's triggering the interaction I'm not exactly sure about interaction trigger maybe somebody else can put that in the comments and let me know but I do know that if you choose the selected element it will all of those selected elements on the page will actually take the animation so if you are choosing this H1 um, and you wanted to change the target you could see that because this has the uh, it's called H1 post title then all of the H1 post titles that we have on the page you can see them all here they're all gonna take this um, they're all going to take this animation. So, not what we want to do. If you want to change the target, you just right click and do change target. Click on a new element, and the image is the one that we want to affect. So, let's just choose that. <coughs> now, this one is really important because this determines uh, what is the initial state of the element. And because we want the element to sort of start low and come high, um, we need to set the initial state but we need to push this element down on the page so that when it loads it can come up again that's our move that we're going to make <clears throat> we have a few different choices here you can see the little icons maybe uh, this one is for the x-axis this is the y-axis so vertical and this is the z-axis so that deals with the depth of each of the elements which you can see if you just drag them you can see that's horizontal you can see that's vertical and Z doesn't do anything because we don't have any other elements uh, stacked on top of it. So let's just go through <coughs> and clear those out. What we want to affect is the Y axis. So we want this to move vertically. So let's do something like 30 pixels. You could also do 2 rem, um, you know, whatever you want to do. As for, uh, I think it'll do rem. No? Well, it has to be pixels. Oh, no, nope, there it is. Okay, so clicking over here gives you all the different uh, gives you all the different things that you can do. Let's just stick with 30 pixels. <coughs> and so that's our initial state of our image. And then we want it to move from 30 pixels down back to its zero state, which you can see this empty space up here is how far it's going to move. And to do that, we need we have a start to our animation, and now we have to do an end. So if you click on the plus, uh, we want to do the same thing. We want it to move from starting here to wherever we want to move it. Uh, again, the selected element. This time, you do not want it to be the initial state. Uh, this one is the initial state, and this one is the ending state. Uh, we do want it to start after the previous action and not before. So you can sort of layer uh, your different moves um, just by making one happen before the other or even delaying how long uh, one move takes compared to the other. We're just going to do one second and that's how long it's going to take to go from 30 pixels up to this um, to zero essentially. It's going to take one second to move this far. And uh, the last thing is our ease in and ease out. So this is, um, think of ease in, ease out as when you start to run, you don't get up to full speed until you're about the middle of the run and then you start to slow down, right? So that's ease in, ease out, that's this one. Uh, a shorthand is just to use ease. Uh, linear is if you started to run and you were at the maximum speed when you started and you're at the maximum speed in the middle and you're at the maximum speed at the end. It's all one speed. It's not a, a starting slow and ending slow. Uh, and then ease in, ease out. You're just sort of 
slowing down either as you start or as you end. So it's like half of this. So uh, we're just going to use ease in and ease out. That's uh, shorthand is ease. And then the very last thing that we need to do here is we need to set our final destination. It tells us here the action doesn't have a value applied. So you need to have a value of, of where is this animation going to end. So you say zero pixels. And you can see here that our space is gone now. And so over one second, it's going to move <coughs> from here to here. You can see our move without any sort of uh, easing. This is just if it was moving from one place to another. So you start here, and then it moves up to here. If you click here, you can see your animation happen. And it really is just that easy uh, to add just a small animation. So if we check that out in the browser, you can see here, uh, what do I got here? As we go down, you'll see it happen down here. Okay, you see that little move? And because we've attached it to these collection images, on every single one it's going to happen. But you can see already how there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of space necessarily between here, so you can see, okay, we're getting to a new, there's another um, post down here sort of waiting for me to get there. So even if you're reading here, you've seen this out of the corner of your eye, and you can, you know, you're sort of anticipating getting down to another post. Uh, and then when you get to the end, you know, there's no more, no more posts, so you know that you get uh, to the end of the, the post list. So that is uh, the super basics as far as um, how you can just create one animation. But let's layer another animation on top of it at the same time. So in order to do our fade in, fade out, or fade in, we click on the plus sign and we want it to start at the exact same time uh, on page load, or when the element, sorry, when the element uh, hits the bottom of the viewport. And this time we want to choose opacity. And our initial state, again, needs to be selected. This is our element. And our opacity, instead of 100, needs to be 0. So you can see that it doesn't show up on the page. So none of our images are showing when the page is loaded. We want the animation to end after one second. So you can click here, I believe, at the end. And it will... Uh, it will finish it at one second. Is that right? No, that's not right. Let's just click here. Oh, we need to select an element. Click here for opacity. And then we want it to happen here, not one second later. Um, if you click here, then it's going to add an animation at one second, which is not what we want to do. We want it to add it right here uh, at our half second. So again, this is uh, where everything starts, and this is where everything is going to finish for us, at least, in our animations. So we click on this opacity. Uh, again, it's the selected element. We do not want it to be the initial state, because it's the second uh, part of our animation. Uh, we want it to happen at the exact same time as the previous action, so exactly the same as the move and the opacity. Uh, no delay so we don't want it to delay and we want to choose ease in ease out again and same duration of one second and then this time we want the opacity to be 100 percent so by the time we get to the end of our animation and it slides up we want it to have come in to 100 percent uh, so if we check that you can see that it fades in and comes up It'll be easier to see here, a little smoother. So when we get down, when the top of this image hits the bottom of the viewport, then it's going to come in. You can see that nice and smooth. And it lets me know, hey, there's more down here, right? So even if I scroll here and I'm reading here, I've seen this happen. So it's a nice little usability uh, trick, especially when you have repeating content like this. Uh, just to let you know, hey, you know, there's more here. Keep scrolling. Uh, so this is one really good uh, way to, to do your animations. 
and I'll show you one last thing about it and that's the offset now what the offset does is it provides you a buffer above the element uh, so that let's say you don't want it when the element hits the bottom of the viewport you want it to fade in like right here and you've sort of seen that with different uh, websites that you've been on probably it's like it waits until it's already in the viewport and then it starts all of the animation so we can I don't know 20 percent you know I don't know what you would choose you can also choose pixels so how many pixels let's say 100 pixels and let's go ahead and do a uh, let's do our scrolling here now it's going to show up as blank when it gets to the bottom of the screen and then when it the top of the top of this element when it reaches a hundred pixels which is probably I don't know it's around in here then it's going to start the animation so you can see that it's blank nothing's happened yet because it hasn't met our threshold of a positive 100 pixels so once it does then it comes in so again sort of another way of doing uh, of doing this if you for some reason wanted the uh, if you wanted the trigger to um, I don't think you can do negative let me see I know in JavaScript you can do a minus 100 so let's see if it allows it yeah it does allow it so it's already stopped you can see that because it's happening 100 pixels before it reaches the viewport the animation is beginning so if you scroll really fast then you can see it but if you just scroll slow you don't see nearly as much see that one you didn't even see because I stopped so you could do a negative um, you could do a negative um, offset as well so that's how offsets work and then you can sort of time up multiple animations uh, on top of each other so that things are doing you know things are doing all kinds of uh, things as you scroll them into view and so you can layer your animations as they scroll into view uh, and you can always click preview and it'll show you you know what what your animation is in a little bit uh, better way than like this so I hope that is clear to you animations are so they're really great and there's you can see that how easy they are in uh, webflow to do but it takes a little bit of time to sort of get what's the workflow of stacking animations you know what do I need to click first what do I need to click second how do they work um, if you're only accustomed to writing the code uh, in JavaScript for animations or if you don't know much about them at all um, then it can be a little bit confusing at first so hopefully this uh, helps you to get a better lay of the land of how they work uh, Webflow has some really great tutorials that are faster than me um, and they're just sort of showing you how to set up the animation how to do the different things uh, they have a great uh, channel for learning and um, I just wanted to show you on more of a, uh, a real world project and not necessarily a tutorial but this is a tutorial I guess um, if you have any questions or comments you can leave them down in the comments section below uh, I'll get back to them as quickly as I can uh, if you find this helpful and there's somebody else that you know a designer or another developer who is having a hard time just understanding the concept of the animations in Webflow then uh, by all means share it with them share it with your social network if you think it's great and uh, always click the subscribe button if you haven't already and then click the bell and that'll give you notifications whenever I post new videos usually one or two videos a week and uh, not overwhelming but always to do with you know some topic in web development or uh, APIs or doing something alright thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time